Uh, we have to factorize this expression with x squared minus 4xy and then plus 3y squared. And then uh, x is a square term, however, 3 is not square term. And we don't find any common factor. So we can't use common factor. We can't use identity. We have to use the last method, cross factorization. To do this, we focus on the first term and the last term, x squared, positive 3y squared. And then we have to brainstorm any combination. Uh, what time, what will give you x squared? And this is straightforward. It should be x times x. Similar reason, we have to find two combinations so that we multiply will give us the last term. A 3 is easy to handle because it must be 1 times 3 or 3 times 1. So maybe I try 1y times 3y. And then we have to test. It seems like we expand this two bracket. And then we try to test the middle term. Is that consistent with the given condition here? So if we do so, we will have 3xy and then plus 1xy, which is equal to 4xy. It's close, but not exactly the same. It's because what we have is negative xy. That's why this is not a correct combination. We have to try it again. But uh, just like what we mentioned, the magnitude are the same already. So we may try negative times negative. It also gives you positive results, positive products. So if we do so, we check again. X times negative 3. Negative 3xy. X times negative 1y, we have negative xy negative 4xy, which is the same as the middle term that we have. That's why we can rearrange in this way. Uh, it's called the clause factorization. It's because of the testing method here. We follow a clause. So the factorized outcome is x minus 3y times x minus y. Uh, no step can be written down. All this, please just write down in your draft paper. Part B, we have x squared minus 4xy plus 3y squared. It's obviously the same as part A. So uh, we put all other things a little bit further away. Left hand side, uh, we just finish once. We don't need to continue. x minus 3y, x minus y. And then right hand side, I want x, that's why I extract positive 11. If I extract it, the first term divide both si divided by 11, we get x. Negative 33 divided by 11, we get negative 3 and y. So now we have the first term, we have the second term. We are looking for any common factor, that means common parts. We find out that x minus 3y and x minus 3y is a common factor for both terms. That's why we try to extract it. I will put the common factor in the most left hand side. It's just my normal practice. And then prepare a bracket to put everything which is left. So just the same as extracting a single number, extract this uh, bracket x minus y is left, so we write down what is left below. For the second term, extract this bracket, positive 11 is left. Finally, we just tidy up our answer. Uh, this bracket is unnecessary, it's because outside is positive 1. So it will be just simply unchanged when we remove the bracket. Uh, for factorization, a very important thing is the structure and the spacing. Make good use of the spacing. Whenever you extract common factor, put it to left-hand side, and then you just focus on what is left inside a bracket here.